It was midsummer in Canton, Mississippi, as the mosquitoes swarmed just above the surface of the small pond. A boy sat on the bank, watching a brown piece of cork bob lazily in the water, while dragonflies, or snake doctors as some called them, darted past in a zigzag, nervous manner, occasionally lighting on a nearby branch. Even amid the oppressive heat and humidity, the little pond was alive with the sights and sounds of the country. The deep grunt of a bullfrog resounded in the distance. On the other side of the pond, beside a rotted tree trunk, the calm surface of the water violently erupted in a loud splash, sending rings of waves out across the pond. Becoming impatient, the boy lifted his cane pole and swung the bait a little farther out. Then, feeling an almost imperceptible stinging sensation on his leg, he looked down and noticed that he was hosting breakfast for a small, gray mosquito. The boy raised his left hand and positioned it just above his leg. Slap! He wiped his hand on his pants and continued to watch his cork. Marvin, can I ask you something? There was quite a gathering on the old stump that morning. Some had just hatched, while others were becoming too old to fly anymore. This stump, in particular, was a favorite among many of the pond's mosquitoes, who frequented the secluded spot for some relaxation or just to talk about the latest news. Look here, Ralph. We gone over this about a hundred times already, said Marvin annoyed. I know, Ralph said, but I'm still kind of confused. Marvin scratched his antenna and shook his head disapprovingly. Fine. What you thinking about now? Marvin, do you really think when we die, we go to the big pond? Course I do. You know the story well as me. I know it say the great skeet of love every one of us. I reckon that's true, Marvin added. So why do only some of us skeeters get to go to the big pond? Cause the great Burza gets to choose who he wants to go. So he only loves some of us. Um, well, I wouldn't say that. You see, he knows who's gonna obey him before it happens. So he just chooses them skeeters he knows will believe in him. He loves all of us in the sense that he give us blood. But he can't allow no skeeters in the big pond that ain't willing to obey him. But why the story say he don't want none of us to go to the dark pit if he's the one who do the choosing? Ain't it in his power to take all us skeeters to the big pond? Ralph asked. Yep, I reckon he could do that. But you see, that would just make us robots. No will of our own, you see? Marvin argued. Marvin, when we get to the big pond, are we going to be able to do bad things? Course not, Ralph. We'll be changed. We'll be different. We'll be like Burza. Then if we can't do no bad things, won't we all just be like robots? We won't be able to decide on whether to do bad things or not. And why couldn't Burza make us that way here in this life? Ralph reasoned. You ask the strangest questions. I don't rightly know for sure why he didn't just go ahead and make us all like we're going to be after we get to the big pond. But uh, I reckon he has a reason, though. Ralph looked away. He stared out over the stump and across the shimmering pond. Marvin, he said, then paused. Yep. The story say that them skeeters that don't believe in Burza go to the dark pit after they die. I reckon that's true, Marvin confirmed. And they all suffer forever? Ralph asked. Marvin looked from Ralph and back out over the pond. That's what the story say. Then why they have to suffer forever for the bad things they done that only lasted a little while? Hmm. Marvin paused to contemplate. Maybe they ain't being made to suffer for the things in cell so much uh, as they are for not believing in Burza. If a Skeeter deny him for his whole life, then I suppose he done made his choice. He don't believe in Burza and don't want anything to do with him. So Burza just grant his request. Ralph scratched his head. 
But I still ain't understanding how things went wrong if a perfect Skeeter created everything. Don't that mean that even birds that don't have control over everything? Ralph was now more confused than ever with each passing answer. Now, just cause the first Skeeter drank from the forbidden animal, you think that Burza didn't know it would happen? He knew what would happen, and that's why he went and gave us a way out. Marvin was growing impatient with Ralph. Then why does there even have to be a forbidden animal? There's many a bad thing the first Skeeter could have done. Burza just wanted him to mess up. This whole business sound hokey to me. Why can't you explain it where it makes sense? Ralph grew angry now. He fluttered his wings a few times in Marvin's direction. Don't you be getting smart with me, Ralph. I wasn't just hatched last night, you know. I know a few more things than you, I reckon. But no Skeeter can understand the deep mysteries of Burza. We just gotta believe it, on faith. Just like the stories say, this life ain't nothing but a vapor. Here one day, gone the next. You might get 14 days if you're lucky. But while we are here, we supposed to strive for the blood that never runs dry. We supposed to keep our eyes on Burza and believe in him. We supposed to... I don't think there is a Burza, Ralph interrupted. This is all we get. You hatch, you live, you get eaten by a big old dragonfly. Marvin, I can't believe this stuff. It say one thing and turned right around and says another. Burzy is perfect, but he couldn't make a perfect pond. Burzy is all powerful, but he couldn't make it so every skeeter get to go to the big pond. Does it need the evil to make it goodness bigger? Ralph was now on a roll. Answer me that. It ain't fair. It just ain't fair to be sending no Skeeter to the dark pit just cause birds are didn't up and choosing. Now look here, Ralph. You shouldn't talk like that. You might just get birds riled. Birds I might just have a good mind to send down a big old. Just then, a large green blur rocketed toward the stump, headed straight for Marvin and Ralph. Fly! Fly away! Marvin yelled as they all frantically took to the air, but it was too late. Ralph watched as the dragonfly carried Marvin off. Ralph buzzed around some tree limbs until the danger passed, then settled back down onto the stump. While the other mosquitoes lighted all around him, he gazed up into the sky and stared at the wispy clouds that floated lazily across the clear blue expanse. One thing I do believe, Marvin, said Ralph to himself, Life ain't nothing but a vapor.